Hello everyone, my name is Sophia. I am a data scientist. Welcome to my video. In this video, I plan to talk about a retention analysis framework from a data science perspective. I will talk about the following topics. Three dimensions of measuring retention, time, user status, and action. Analytical frameworks of retention analysis. How to find the aha moment and the happy moment through analysis and investigate why users stay and leave. So if you're interested in learning about retention analysis or interested in uh, learning how to answer the business sense questions in your data science interview, keep watching. Why is it important to do retention analysis? You guys might have heard about the AARRR framework, which is one of the popular uh, business growth frameworks. AARRR stands for Acquisition, Activation, Retention, Revenue, and Referral. But when you think about it, it doesn't make sense to put acquisition first. It doesn't matter how many new users you get, it doesn't mean anything if you can't keep them stay. And also, of course, acquisition strategies like ads are very expensive. It is a lot cheaper to retain a user than to get a new user. And for many other reasons, some people later reprioritized the AARR framework to the RARR framework with retention as the number one priority. The RARR framework stands for Retention, Activation, Referral, Revenue, and Acquisition. So the first question that comes to your mind might be, how do we define and measure retention? What is retention? Retention measures how many users return to your product over some specified time. If you look at this definition, you might see some problems with this definition. What do we, what do we mean by users? What do we mean by coming back? And what do we mean by time? Those are really good questions. And those are the exact three dimensions I'm going to talk about. Understanding those measures and dimensions will help you choose the right one for your product. The first dimension is time. The most popular retention measure that everyone uses is the end day retention. It measures that among users who first use the product at day zero, what proportion of them are still active at day n. Here, day could also be week or month for a n week retention measure or a n month retention measure. Whether to use daily, weekly, or monthly retention totally depends on your product and how often users use your product. For example, for gaming products with high stickiness, it is typical to measure end day retention on a daily basis. Unbounded retention, also called rolling retention, measures among users who first use the products at day zero, what proportion of them are still active on and after day n. Bracket retention is more flexible. You can define whichever time frame you're interested in. For example, Pinterest measures the percentage of new signups that are still doing key actions during, during a one-week time window of 28 to 35 days after signup. We'll talk about what is the key actions later. The second dimension I want to talk about is user status. In addition to time, user status is often another important dimension to consider. So how do we define user status? There are many ways to define user statuses. You might see different definitions uh, from different companies and different products. Uh, people have their own way to define user statuses. So here is just one way and one example that user status can be defined. New user, churn user, inactive user, reactive user, and active user. It is often important to calculate retention for different user statuses. Let's think about it. New user retention measures the proportion of new users who stay active. Active user retention measures the proportion of active users who stays active. Um, in the example of feature changes, we might see that active user retention goes down because users have already gotten used to the product. However, in the meantime, the new user retention could go up, suggesting that this feature change could be an improvement improvement in the long run. The third dimension I want to talk about is action. 
when we say users use a product, we didn't define what we mean by use. Should, um, should we define use as visiting the product page, staying for a certain amount of time, conducting certain actions, or purchasing a product? We call the actions we use to calculate retention key actions. With so many measures and all those dimensions, which one do we use and where do we start? For the first dimension, time, I would start with the classic end day, week, or month retention and investigate the rest later. To determine the time interval, I would plot how often users use the product, plot the percentage, percentage of users who use the product uh, X amount of times with various intervals and plot retention with those various intervals to see which one makes sense for your product. It's okay to include more than one time interval in your analysis. For the second dimension, user status, I will start with the new user retention and investigate the active retention, active user retention later, especially if you are developing a new product. Third, for the third dimension, uh, user actions, it actually depends on the product goal. Are you more investigated in monetization values or are you at a stage to grow and retain your users through certain actions? Um, yeah, so it really depends on your product and your business case. Next, let's talk about the analytical frameworks of retention analysis. The first thing is retention curve, which is widely used, everyone probably knows. A retention curve plus the retention over time with time on the x-axis and retention rate on the y-axis. Ideally, we would like to see a smiling curve when users come back more and more over time. A declining curve signifies danger and a flat flattening curve signifies a healthy product. The goal for a product is to shift the curve up and flatten or uptail the curve. It is often common to also do a retention cohort analysis. Cohort analysis tells us where do we see products do well and not well. We can define cohorts from many different categories, such as demographics, acquisitions, and behavior. In terms of the graphical representations, we can represent the retention cohorts in a grouped retention curve or a triangle retention chart. Uh, here is an example with the acquisition time as the cohort. And finally, we have statistical analysis. Like any other types of analysis, we can start by calculating descriptive statistics and correlations. We can also conduct survival analysis to determine which attributes matter. In addition, the RFM retention uh, frequency monitoring analysis framework is often popular for user segmentations. So where should we start with the analysis? A starting point would be to see a dashboard showing the retention curve and triangle retention charts for all the interesting cohorts and groups. Uh, then we can generate, generate insights from the dashboard and starting from there. One of the important value of retention analysis is that we can do some really concrete analysis to generate insights. For example, for new users, we can try to find the aha moment through our analysis. For new users, the most important thing is the onboarding experience that happens within the first few days or weeks. Almost all products want to help users to achieve the aha moment as quickly as possible. The question is, how do, the, how do we define a user's aha moment? What is the user's behavior that contribute to the aha moment? For example, Facebook for focuses on getting seven friends in 10 days, the behavior getting friends and the magic number seven friends in 10 days indicates users future success. I don't think that we all should find a behavior with a magic number for all of our products, but I do think it is important to figure out what behavior contribute to the aha moment from our data then the product team can use this information to improve our onboarding experience. A starting point of this analysis is to find the user event and the onboarding behaviors that are related to retention in future weeks and months. So a simple correlation analysis or descriptive statistics 
we'll show you this kind of insight. For long-term users, we want to find the, the habit moment. How do the most successful long-term users form a habit to use the product? Who are those users? What features do they keep using? What attributes do they have? And what is the user journey for them? The goal is to find successful feature, features and the user journeys. Invest in those successful features and encourage new users to, to follow uh, successful user journeys. Again, we can do uh, some descriptive analysis on long-term users to identify those user behaviors and features and then conduct cohort analysis to find user journeys for those people. Okay, so you might wonder, for a given product, why do people choose to leave and stay? There might be many, many reasons why people leave and stay. There might be many reasons why people choose to leave and churn. For example, there might not be, they might not understand the product, the product might not be, might be hard to, to use. People prefer a competitor's product. The product might have some issues like bugs or being slow. Um, the new user is not the target user. There could be a mismatch between the users and the core features. And also people might only need our product for a very short amount, a short period of time, uh, and they don't need our product anymore. And then there could be many reasons why people stay. For example, people may love the product, the personalized notifications work, it has become a habit for people to use the product, um, and, and many more. Those reasons behind why users stay and leave might be hard to derive directly from the product data. Instead, doing user research and experiments can help. For example, conducting experiments on a better onboarding experience might help people understand the product, you, the product better during, during onboarding. Experiments on push notifications might help remind people on the values of the product. And experiments on, that, on various product features might help identify and promote the key features people love. Uh, understanding the reason is hard. Collaboration here is the key. To understand the users, we can collaborate with the UX research team to help design the surveys and interviews and generate insights. To run experiments, us data scientists can collaborate with the engineers to, to design experiments and analyze results. Hopefully this video provides you some perspectives on how to get started on your retention analysis and how to deep dive for future analysis. Please let me know if you have any thoughts or comments. I would love to hear them. Thank you.